Funding for Greater Chattanooga is provided by EPB Fiber Optics, Kelly Subaru, and Earth's Remedies of Dalton. Chattanooga's Innovation District was formed as a way to continue uh, building on previous years of development and looking at how um, we could really utilize the assets within our city and help kind of shape what was next. Since the doors to the Edney opened in 2015, it's been really a front door for the Innovation District. In a 11-story building, you've got startups, you've got established businesses, so it's really um, been the place that our community, both within the Innovation District and beyond, connect, meet each other, collide, and collaborate. When the Edney building was chosen as the hub of that district, um, a lot of questions started being asked about Patent Towers that was right across the street. Patent Towers, it's a low income building for people who are elderly and also disabled. You have to be 62 or over, or you have to have a physical or mental disability. It is, has its challenges, but they're a great group of people. This building was built in the early 1900s. When it was initially built, it was a hotel. In the 70s is when it changed over to public housing. Patton Towers has a very bad reputation um, in the city. We don't match what the Innovation District persona is. We kind of stick out like a sore thumb. When people think innovation, they think it doesn't include them, and they think that they aren't an innovator, they, you know, that's for people in tech, but we wanted people to see that innovation meant improving something in their own lives and in the lives of their neighbors. If you have a whole building dedicated to innovation and problem solving, um, but the building right across the street is facing a lot of problems, you can't ignore that. People at the Edney building or people in this district probably also did not feel comfortable with the residents because they look different. Uh, they act different. You may feel uncomfortable being around someone who's not like you. You know, as we grow, we can feel isolated, you know. So how do we bring those people together to understand that we're all humans together in this walk of life? Thankfully, uh, people at the Edney building reached out to me and they said that they didn't want to partner up with us, which I really appreciated. They started having bingo games here. That started forming relationships. That was just a really fun way um, to be in the same room together. Um, I think we assumed, you know, we'd be having good conversation over bingo, but we learned <laughs> bingo's intense. <laughs> you don't talk during bingo. The residents started knowing who was across the street. They started recognizing them when they went past, and then people at that building, they started recognizing the residents also. That really evolved into getting to know more about their needs and evolved into a lot of different partnerships that culminated in Bingo's Market. This area doesn't really have access to groceries, and many of the residents here don't have transportation. Food access is, is really a, an important piece to uh, the overall health and well-being of our neighborhoods. Even if there were a grocery store down the street, it would be really difficult for a lot of them to, to get there. So having a place that's within where they live, where they can access uh, fresh foods is, is really important. Started laying the groundwork for researching and developing what that might look like, developing a startup budget, toured the space, met with the residents, and then started formulating that plan. I think the strength of Bingo's Market is that it doesn't rely on one person to say this is how we're going to do it. We just got at the table and said, okay, here's what the YMCA is doing, here's the information that Causeway um, has pulled, here's uh, the resources of the Enterprise Center. One of my favorite things about Chattanooga is that we do things a little bit differently and that a priority in all of the Innovation District has been the relational aspect of it and building relationships not just between um, one business and another business who are both working on similar things but people who wouldn't be interacting normally but who are sharing a space. 
The tagline is where everyone wins. We're still working on getting people to know that, that it's not just a grocery store for people in Patton Towers, it's a grocery store for all of us. The community is able to come in and they're able to walk past the residents and come right into the store. I think they realize like, hey, these are just like regular everyday people. And then it also lets the residents see people coming into their building without being judgmental toward them. When the store first started, there were still some residents who felt like, well, that's not for us, it's for the community. But now they realize it's for us also. We knew that that was an interesting challenge because um, you have the primary customer, the people who live in Patton Towers, they need access to healthy food. Um, but in order for Bingo's to really be financially sustainable, we knew that we would need shoppers from outside of the building as well. And those are two distinctly different audiences. And they also feel like it's a little pricey for them. They need to come down. I mean, they need to uh, just come down because it's not hidden, bro. It's starting with education around SNAP and EBT, and then it's moving to getting entrepreneurs to be more intentional about putting produce and frozen produce in their stores and keeping it affordable instead of having the rates go up because it's a convenience matter and they have to pay more than a large store does for those products anyway. That's what we face. The voices of the Patton Towers residents has been crucial in forming and creating Bingo's Market, but it's still just as crucial for the sustainability of Bingo's Market. Hey, this is great. I don't have to walk. So this works good for all of us. Places, like I said, it's, it's convenient. I mean, it makes a big difference. It helps me out a lot. I mean, I love this place. So initially, it was only a six to seven month pilot program anyway. During that six month process, we became aware of potential transfer of ownership of the facility. And so it seemed like uh, that was a good time to go ahead and end the pilot. So we uh, opened Bingo's Market to see if it could work in the ground floor here. Uh, we're really excited that we're going to be able to reopen it. Yeah. Yeah. We achieved uh, getting enough data to be able to say, yeah, we, we think we can do this. The project partners are working to uh, restock it, move their equipment and, and fixtures back in, all the things you need to run basically a bodega. And in the meantime, our, our part of that is just making sure that the space is ready for them to use. So now it's more about developing uh, a long-term model, you know, something that also, uh, that can be replicated in other communities. If you're commuting into work, how do you take and, and break that down, that I'm just going to work, I'm going to do my job, and I'm going to leave that area and go back home, right? Well, you're here, and we want you to be invested in, not only in your job where you work, but in the neighborhood in which you work. And so that's some of the intentional efforts that are being made. People who work can see the true despair that some of these residents face. It kind of opens up a heart of compassion and it, it exposes you to more and it really gives you um, a broader way of thinking. I think there's still a lot of work to be done in bringing people together in a way that creates equality. You can't force people to become, you know, develop relationships, but we can create environments where that can happen and, and that's what's important.